brief overview of chapter one. In chapter one, you're introduced to the definition of a social problem. Now, many people think of all kinds of things as a social problem that would not necessarily be viewed as a social problem by sociologists. For sociologists, social problems are social conditions that affect large numbers of people and are viewed by large groups of people as being problematic. Uh, in essence, there's this piece of large numbers of people being affected and people, large groups of people recognizing this and particularly people in power, governmental agencies at the federal, state, local levels, recognizing that this is an issue that must be addressed. So if we think about something, here's a social condition. Some people would argue that young people who walk around wearing their pants sagged more than halfway down their butts uh, is a social problem. But it's not really a social problem. It's a social condition. It's a social condition because it doesn't affect large numbers of people negatively. Um, there's no real harm done to people when young people do this, particularly young men. Um, and people in power aren't really looking at this as something that, a problem that needs to be solved. And so if we think though about homelessness, well, we know there are large people, numbers of people across the United States who experience homelessness. We also know that large numbers of people view this as problematic and that people who have power at the local, the state, and the federal levels do also view this as a problem that needs to be addressed. And so there are various programs and funding to try to address the, prob the social problem of homelessness. So focusing on that difference. We also, in this chapter, learn that social constructionism uh, plays a role in how social problems are defined. Social problems are not defined in the same way everywhere. Part of that is because culture helps to shape what we think of as being a social problem. Okay? Every culture is unique, and while in some cultures something that might be considered a social problem might be just a social condition in a different country. And you'll also be introduced to the idea that power has something to do with how we define social conditions and social or social problems. People who have power may not define something as problematic. Here's an example of that. In the early 1900s, whether women went to college was not considered a social problem. In fact, women were discouraged from attending college because it was thought that women were not smart enough, that women uh, might have difficulty during their menstrual cycles um, in classes, uh, and really that women don't need to be educated because their place is in the home, taking care of their husbands, their homes, and their children. Well, today, when we think of access to college education for women, if that is not happening, we view it as a social problem. Education for girls and women globally is viewed as a social problem. Whereas 100 years ago, well, more than 100 years ago, 150 years ago, it wasn't viewed as a social problem. So how we define social problems changes. Power is also part of how we define social problems. And of course, the unique culture in each society also influences how we define social problems. I hope that you enjoy learning how to identify social problems in this chapter and as we begin our journey in the study of contemporary social problems.